I graduated magna cum laude from Yale with a master's in business administration. I landed a job in the top investment banking firm in New York, and five years later, I was in line to become the youngest partner in the firm's history. I was among the most popular girls in college. I was a biology major on my way to medical school. Um, I was aiming for one of the top ones. I was fairly social, and I had a lot of friends. <laughs> I wasn't really dating anyone, but there was this guy, Scott, that I had been talking to. We had a few classes together. I kind of liked him, but I was really focused towards my ultimate goal, which was um, my preparations for medical school. I was working in sales at a small company and been promoted to regional head. My wife and son were really happy. We decided to celebrate by taking a trip to Thailand. It had been a while since we'd been on holiday, and we thought it would bring the three of us closer. I grew up in a one-bedroom apartment with my three brothers. My mother, she was the only person bringing in any real money. See, where I'm from, you can get shot from in the wrong color hoodie. There was only two types of dreamers in my neighborhood. You either rapped or you gangbang. The economic crisis of 08. My firm collapsed. I lost my job. I thought with my qualifications I'd be able to get another one no problem, but six months passed and there was still nothing on the market. I moved into a small studio. I stopped talking to people. And my friends and my family, I just shut them out. I wanted to be alone. I started drinking a lot. I lost my motivation to do anything. I stopped searching for jobs. I'd given up hope on getting one. I was, I guess I was embarrassed. I kept comparing myself to my friends. They're all achieving a lot. All I could think of was how I dashed my parents' expectations. I just sort of gave up on life. That's when I started thinking about ending it all together. It was New Year's Eve and Scott invited me to a house party. I went there with a friend. We started to drink one, two drinks after I completely lost, lost count of how many drinks I was having. The next thing I know, Scott is on top of me, forcing himself upon me. I was neither in a mental nor physical state to stop him. him entering me. It was the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. Then he left and someone else came into the room and the same thing happened. I passed out after that. I never talked about that night to anyone. I tried forgetting about that night and moving on. But my nightmare had just started. A month later, I found out I was pregnant. I got an abortion. The trauma of the night, the abortion, and Everything together just started fucking up with my head. The hormonal changes that you go through during pregnancy and after abortion, they just screw with your mind. We were on Phuket Island. 
My wife and son wanted to go to the beach. I had to meet a friend in the city. So I told them that I would meet my friend and I would see them at dinner time. I was having lunch with my buddy when I heard about the tsunami. I had no idea what it was. People, people started panicking and running. I tried to get back to the resort, but there was no way that I could. I never found my wife and son. I came back to the States and saw on TV what had happened to Thailand. I was devastated. I was devastated. The empty house started to haunt me. It started closing in on me. I felt claustrophobic, trapped, helpless, guilty that I had done nothing for my wife and son. I had let them die. I didn't even bid them goodbye. Every day was worse than the previous day. I had lost all the reasons for living. So. I had always been fascinated with buildings and architecture. I wanted to study architecture when I went to school. I started to apply to colleges that were providing scholarships for architecture. People around me were saying that this isn't possible. No college would accept me. Um, how would I pay for college? Um, you know, I'm not built for this. But I was adamant and focused. I started to receive rejection letters. One, two, three. I lost count of how many colleges rejected my admission. My chances of going to college were bleak and nil. My thoughts started to go in other directions. Unable to cope with my situation, I, I started doing drugs. We, coke, heroin, basically anything I can get my hands on. I started to work at McDonald's to fund my, my drug habits. I started to believe in my fate and the fact that nothing that I could do, and the fact that there's nothing that I can do to change it. I remember waking up that morning. I had planned it all the night before. I, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to go away quietly. I left a note on my table that said, Manhattan Bridge. I walked halfway across the bridge. I was in a weird sort of trance state of mind. I wasn't thinking about the past or the future. I was focusing on the present. On jumping off that bridge. So I looked left and I looked right. And I climbed up on the railings and jumped. I remember waking up in a hospital and somewhere. And the man next to me, he was screaming and wailing. He'd just been told he had a couple months to live. I guess he was in his 40s. He kept crying. He wanted more time, more time to, to live, to enjoy living, to be with his friends and his family and, and the world. A chill ran down my back and then it struck me. I can't give up on life. <laughs> sure, I'm down for the count, but I've got this one precious life. Now, if God wants to take it, then so be it, but I can't just give it up on my own. I have to get back up and I have to fight. It's what life's about, not giving up. And my friends and my family came in 
for the first time in a really long time, I was happy. I was so happy to see them. I was so happy to, to have a second chance at life. I started having negative thoughts about everything. I lost interest in studies, sports, and all the things that made me feel good. I, I had difficulties facing people, especially men. It was nighttime. I was at the lowest point of my life. I had no feelings, no thoughts, no emotions. My mind was blank. I was broken. So I took a bottle of sleeping pills and I thought this is it the ending of the pain the shame the trauma the next thing I remember was being surrounded by paramedics and my mom and dad shouting and I remember seeing the pain in my mom's eyes and that was the moment I realized I I didn't want to die I I wanted to fight back I, I couldn't stand leaving my loved ones. I had started wandering in the city aimlessly. It was late at night and I was in the subway station. I was in another world. Please stay away from the yellow line. I heard the announcement and it occurred to me. I got up from the bench and started walking towards the yellow line. I crossed the line. I checked the monitor. There was still a minute for the train. I heard the whistle. I leaned and looked. I could see the lights started walking towards the train. I was looking for the exact point where I was going to jump. I found the point, and I was just about to jump when someone called my name. I turned and looked, and it was Tony. My buddy from college, I'd known him since childhood. He had no idea what I was gonna do, but he stopped and insisted that we go to a bar and talk. He was like a guardian angel that saved me without knowing it. At the bar, all I could think of was whatever I was gonna do, that was not like me. I was a fighter and I knew that my wife and son would have wanted me to fight and stay. And it was like the fog lifted and I could think proper and straight. And that was the last time I ever thought about giving up on life. The mission season ended and I was still here. I was reaching my breaking point. Life was just fucking unfair. I mean, I just finished my shift at the store and I went out and I bought a bottle of whiskey and I drank it till my body was numb. And then, and then my thoughts they, and then when the alcohol started to hit me, my thoughts, 
They became depressive and convoluted. Hey, stop! I know what you're doing. I want to show you something. We went to the park, and we talked. It felt good. I haven't opened up to anyone in a long time. She told me about her life, and she survived much worse than, than, than I went through. And I really learned that if you fight and keep fighting, you can get through anything. She really motivated me to be a better person for me and for my family. And thanks to her, I am where I am. After that day, I never thought about ending my life ever again. It took me six months. They were hard six months, but I got a job. And now I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm surrounded by my friends and my family, and hell, I'm, I'm getting married in a month. I'm just glad that I didn't give up, and I fought back. My bond with my parents grew stronger. They were very supportive, and really helped me throughout the recovery process. I couldn't be more thankful for such a wonderful life. I got into med school and now I'm on my way to become a cardiologist. I do face challenges in life, but they're just part of being alive. I'm just happy to be living. I'm glad I didn't give up and fought back. I had a different zeal towards life after that. I wanted to do something with my life and make myself more meaningful. So I quit drinking and I started working with charities, helping them with sales and organization and things like that. I work with a lot of charities now, especially those with children. Seeing them grow up and start a new life, it motivates me and keeps me going. I may have lost a son, but I found so many other children. I'm glad that I did not give up and I fought back. So I guess you could say, Jess really impacted my life. After our conversation at the park, I went back to the drawing board and applied for more colleges for the following year. During the year off, I worked two jobs, I saved my money, and I worked on my skills. <laughs> and then finally one day, I get a letter from the University of Wisconsin saying that I have a full ride, a full ride. <laughs> I never cried so hard in my life before. I, I, I really, that was the happiest day of my life. I'm, uh, I'm really glad I didn't give up and that I fought back. <laughs>